The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. Welcome to the uh, Bookmap uh, Pro Trader webinar series. Uh, today we have Kevin Tauch, um, and a uh, uh, really special trader here. So uh, this should be a fantastic webinar. We had one uh, years ago with Kevin. Uh, he's a longtime uh, Bookmap user. Uh, and um, and now we're uh, really lucky to have him here back again. Uh, he's a futures trader. The um, interesting part here is the microstructure specialist. Uh, he's been consulting internationally for 20 years or over 20 years uh, and uh, experience, um, a lot of experience in medium uh, liquidity, fast moving futures contracts. Uh, he prefers these markets, uh, the lower liquidity, uh, higher uh, volatility markets. Uh, and looks at order book uh, trading strategies. And you can see some of the instruments here, uh, gold, crude, uh, DAX, et cetera. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, he's also um, um, consulted with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Barclays, ICOs, uh, and uh, pr proprietary trader and desks, and, 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 and lots of quants as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, his approach is mainly based on reading the behaviors of the liquidity providers, the market makers, uh, and the high frequency trading activities using the order book and book map. Okay, I, got, I need to go through the risk disclaimer and I wanna go through some contact information uh, for Kevin and then we'll give the presentation to him. Uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And uh, here uh, are uh, all the different links, social media, website, et cetera, uh, for Kevin. Uh, and also special offers for Bookmap from Kevin uh, is uh, here as well. Uh, and don't worry, I'm going to put all of these into the chat periodically throughout the webinar so that you guys have access to them and you should be able to click on them and copy and paste them uh, into your uh, browser, et cetera. Okay, so uh, let's turn it over to Kevin and uh, we'll take it away. Great. Uh, hi, Bruce. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yep, okay, wonderful. Great. So what do you see right now? Which screen? Because I have eight here, so <laughs> I'm not sure which one. Okay, I so see one. I gave you the uh, presentation, so I think you need to, um, uh, you will select a screen uh, and okay. then, and okay. then yeah, yeah, confirm yeah, I'm it. Seeing. Oh, okay, normally now you should see a full uh, page slide of uh, the presentation. We do. Wonderful, okay. So we're going to start. Um, Hi everybody, uh, I hope uh, everybody's fine. Uh, so Bruce did a pretty exhaustive introduction. <laughs> so uh, I've been trading for uh, quite a long time. I started to do uh, consultancy jobs uh, around 2007, 2000, 2008. Um, and so I've, I've learned a lot uh, because I'm giving training to, um, I give a lot of training to institutions and usually when I'm doing it, I learn as much from them as they do learn from me, which is uh, which is very uh, uh, very enlightening sometimes. Uh, and I've learned that there are a lot of misunderstandings when it comes to institutions and institutional trading, uh, market making, liquidity providing, and so on. Uh, and so while I was uh, giving trainings on the practical aspects of trading, uh, I learned also how those guys actually work. Uh, and I saw the, the business evolve uh, because um, nowadays the, the last funds I have done consultancy with, most of the quants, they don't have any market experience. So basically some of them, they come from a completely different field and they specialized in optimizing and working with series of data. So it's interesting because some of them, when you put them behind a notebook, when you, you put them to trade, they have absolutely no ID and they work for the major international funds. So uh, I'm gonna go over this really quick because in fact, uh, well, uh, Bruce uh, almost summarized everything I needed to say. Um, and we're going to jump right in the presentation. So first of all, one key concept in my trading is liquidity. So the first question I will ask you guys is how would you define liquidity? Uh, and Bruce, I think me, I don't have any feedback. Uh, I cannot see the answers. So maybe you can just summarize some of the, uh, the answers we have um, 
to that question. Sure. So, e exactly. Yeah. What? Uh, how would you guys define liquidity? How does it impact your trading today? Um, what? Uh, what are you? Are you looking for? Uh, so I just gave you access to the questions as well, but uh, okay, I, I, okay. I will read them out, no problem. Great. Great. So I'll let everyone, not sure if anyone already replied. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, price and a lot of transactions here. So a lot, a lot of uh, answers here. So um, let's see. Limit order imbalance. This is liquidity. Um, willing buyers and sellers. Um, uh, let's see the um, limit orders. Tight spreads. Uh, the amount of orders yeah, which yeah, uh, operators are well, grateful to sell or buy. Uh, hmm? Wonderful. Okay, so, so some very good answers here. Uh, what have we seen those last uh, those last weeks? Um, what have we seen in the order books? What happened in the with the spreads? If you take a look at the e mini SMP, which is a contract that I usually don't trade, uh, it's a pretty good example. I started to trade the e mini SMP exactly like if it was the DAX 10 years ago, because the liquidity de decreased so much that the way it moves, the way it behaves, uh, the, um, the 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 micro structure moves you can see the the resting limit. Uh, orders in the book are very, very, very um, different from what they were like 10 years ago. I'm not sure if anyone here, I'm pretty sure, uh, some of you guys have known the SMP for quite a while now. The, when I'm talking about the SMP, I mean the, the future CME e mini SMP, uh, of course, and it has changed dramatically. Uh, and we will discuss how and what we can do with it. So, uh, I will go here through uh, some key points, and after that, I have something very fresh from you guys because I know you guys want to see what I'm doing today. So I have uh, videos from yesterday for about the whole day yesterday. I've taken some trading videos that I'm going to share with you, uh, and I also have videos uh, from the 31st of, um, of March, which is two days ago. So you can see that uh, what we're going to talk about here is fresh. It's what's happening now and today. Uh, and you know uh, the, the the trading you do when you trade uh, the liquidity just evolves with the liquidity that is provided, and you just adapt the type of strategy you have. Okay, uh, and that might sound uh, a little bit abstract for now, but uh, as we're going to go over the videos, you will have a more clear idea of how it looks like. So. A lot of traders do not understand that liquidity is the most important concept in order book trading and in trading. Okay, uh, understanding liquidity to me is understanding the markets. If you do understand that you won't move uh, the, for example, uh, let's say now the Eurostox 50 that trades on Eurex, the same way you're going to move the Nasdaq, which is known for being very volatile, then you're probably going to go in, into a lot of trouble. Okay, so how uh would we define volatility now because there is a very tight link and this is something that most people don't get there is a very tight link between volatility and liquidity so how would you guys define volatility that's that's the second question i'm asking to you guys okay let's uh, take a look here uh average true range mm -hmm. the speed, yeah, the, the speed good... the price moves Variance, Very good. standard deviation, mm -hmm. the speed and the and the, the amplitude of the moves because it can be fast, uh, but usually there is a link with the speed of the price action and the vol and um, the liquidity and the volatility. Absolutely. Rate of change, uh, less liquidity, higher volatility. Yeah, less liquidity. That's key. That's very key. And this raised a lot of questions uh, and also on a regulatory standpoint in the last weeks, because you have some people that need to provide liquidity on the market because they, they, they signed a contract with the, with the exchange. Those people are called the market makers, okay? But at the same time, you have some people that provide liquidity without having 
the obligation to be there 24 7 those people are referred to as liquidity providers okay and the problem is that those liquidity providers they are there when we need them the less and when we need them the most usually they're not there anymore and this is what we have seen in the um, in the stock in the stocks to a lesser extent but uh, we have seen it a lot uh, those days in the big DAX, for those of you that follow the big DAX, Eurex, it's like there is like a six, seven uh, um, uh, tick spread, even sometimes 10 tick spreads. I was joking with um, a Hong Kong based trader a couple of days ago. He was telling me like, it's like the bid says to the ask, come to me. And the ask says, no, I'm not coming. You come to me. But it's, it's funny, but it's it, exactly what's happening. Okay. Uh, you can see it also. Uh, if you take a look at the mini though, uh, the future mini though uh, that used to trade Cybot, uh, now CME Cybot, uh, it's the same. The spread is open. When you look at the S&P, since it, it was one of the most liquid ones, well, it's not that bad as what you can have on the on the on the big DAX and on the dough. But still, the liquidity has nothing to do with what we have seen, like uh, even two or three years ago. Okay, so that's a very, very important aspect also. So how would you define volatility? Uh, Mia will come up here with um, uh, with some uh, some some insights when we're going to um, to take a look at the videos. Uh, and now the next question I'm going to ask, but I pretty much answered it um, a couple of a uh, couple of seconds ago. What happened lately on a liquidity standpoint? I'm not sure. What are you guys trading? What contracts are you guys trading? Uh, I'm sure we must have a little bit of everything. Uh, are you mainly trading like big contracts or small contracts like me? When I say small contracts, I mean with a thinner uh, liquidity, with not, a, not as much resting bids and offers uh, as what you can have in the, in the thicker contracts. So what are you guys trading? Not sure, Bruce, yep. uh, Bruce what the, the Most answers are? are saying the stock indexes, uh, crude um, and uh, CL, but e, the ES or the S&P E-mini is the, the most popular by far. Most, oh, okay. Me, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've never been uh, in, in outright, I, I, I've never been an E-mini S&P trader. Uh, I was mainly, uh, mainly trading the fast contracts like uh, Russell, the Dow, uh, crude, gold, DAX, uh, and so on. But I started for the first time in my life to do most of my volume on the on the E-mini S&P uh, due to what happened. Okay, so what happened exactly is that the fact that the liquidity decreased made the contract way more volatile as it used to be. And what I personally personally observed, uh, and I saw it yesterday like the videos I'm going to show you are from yesterday, okay? Uh, now, due to the fact that the liquidity is not that big anymore, an average to small player, when I say average to small player, I mean, probably uh, it's a relative concept, but uh, I, I mean, someone that trades between 100 and 200 lots on the S&P can manipulate it. Usually it, it took way more money than that. Uh, and you, you will see in the video examples I have, you will see a lot of situations where one single person is manipulating the market. And when I say one single person, don't get me wrong, uh, it's uh, algo assisted. But I mean, it's one entity, okay? It's a moral person, okay? So uh, big change uh, in the liquidity, uh, big change in the volatility. Of course, a good way of tracking it, as you guys are, I'm sure, fully aware of, is the um, CBOE VIX. So it's a pretty good way to have an idea of how big the volatility and how thin the liquidity is going to be. Uh, what is another thing that happened? There is another thing that happened pretty, um, pretty often those last weeks that is always a good sign as well. Um, I'm going to give you the answer. I I'll leave you two, three seconds to think it over uh, and try to, um, to identify what I'm talking about, but I will give you a little hint. It's broker-wise. What did most brokers do when this happened? Most, broker, most brokers, and what did the exchange do? 
Uh, uh, on the on the broker standpoint, most brokers that were offering special competitive intraday margins, they raised the margins due to that uh, increase in volatility and that increase in risk. Uh, on another standpoint, the exchanges they started to uh, introduce some um, um, some um, limit limit up and limit down moves to prevent this volatility. And why is the market so volatile? Because the liquidity offered in the order books. I'm repeating it a lot, but I really want you guys to understand that because it's really important. And since you guys are clients of Bookmap, I'm pretty sure you're aware how important that is. But the thing is. All those uh, those things are sign, that are signs, clear signs that you, for example, if you were trading a contract like the Nasdaq, it might be a good time to to stay on the side. Uh, if 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 you're trading a ten lot, then you're lucky. You will just decrease the number of sides you trade by the amount of volatility increase, and that will give you about the same risk. But still, um, in those conditions. The problem is that small to average players can start to manipulate the market, which is not possible when the liquidity is good. Uh, and, and the other little problem that it might uh, create is that the predictability is, is affected. Why? Because the market is the sum of different people working together. Huh? Different people that are, uh, the fact that all this volume is, is coming in the market make the level uh, of control of one single person difficult okay unless of course you are a market maker then you are pretty much always kind of in control and a, a, a very good example uh, that, that i'm always giving i'm not sure if you guys remember when mfg uh, went bankrupt uh, when mfg went bankrupt you had a lot of uh, futures exchanges that closed just because MS, mfg as a as a prime broker uh, and as a FCM was responsible for like 90% of the liquidity in the book. I have a lot of studies uh, made, by, uh, made by regulatory agencies that shows how much liquidity uh, it provided by one single player. Usually when you trade a market like that, well, you know that you need to cope with the market maker's behavior because he's pretty much the, the he, he can do pretty much what he wants in the order book, okay? so. Very important to keep that in mind uh, because a lot of people don't really, a lot of traders don't really realize the, the quantity or the percentage of market makers orders in one book. And there is plenty of evidence of that. A lot of, uh, mainly, mainly when, when that subject is discussed, it's mainly because of um, regulators. So uh, like uh, any national reg regulatory agency uh, of any country with a good stock stock market or futures market is making studies on that because there is a lot of control in the hand of only a few people. But in this case, uh, what I was saying is that the volatility that we uh, currently having in most cases it affects a little bit the predictability of uh, of the market. Uh, okay, so liquidity providers are out of the market and market makers are widening their spreads. Okay, you just need to take a look at uh, book map and uh, at the order book. So we're going to have a quick recap here. And I'm not sure if I can use a little tool to write uh, on the screen. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use it. Uh, Bruce, do you see what I'm writing on the screen? Yes, it's working. Okay, wonderful. That's great. Uh, so this is what we used to have. Okay, this is what... Uh, I, I how, how I classify the markets. So it looks like it's a little difficult to use when I'm using it. I have some uh, some messages, so I'm just going to do it with the mouse. So the ES used to be an used to be a very liquid market. Uh, the 6E average liquidity, the YM average liquidity, the DX, which is the dollar index that trades at ICUS, has medium liquidity. Uh, the low liquidity markets uh, are the DAX the russell the crude the gold uh, there are more but that summarizes it pretty much and here you have uh, most treasuries shad boon bubble uh, 30 years uh, bonds five year notes 10 year notes uh, euro stocks that tend to be more liquid okay so uh, the stock say, stays liquid it's not as liquid as it used to when you when you watch the number of um, of resting bids and offers by price levels uh, but it stays fairly liquid okay uh, the biggest problem 
is the DAX, it's not even possible to trade it anymore. Gold, now spreads are tightening a, a bit, but still the liquidity on gold uh, is pretty low. Uh, and we know that uh, statistically, you can uh, find some research about it pretty much everywhere. It's one of the most manipulated markets. Uh, crude, with what's happening between uh, Saudi Arabia and, uh, and Russia, plus the fact that China, due to the COVID-19 uh, crisis, is not really not, not really consuming crude because it's the first uh, world uh, crude oil uh, consumer. Uh, uh, crude is a, is a little bit so, is something that you need to take apart. Me, I, I'm, I love to trade crude. I'm not trading crude anymore. Not right now. Okay, and and it's pretty quiet. If you watch in the book, there, there is not much to do. Uh, I mean, on an intraday scalping uh, order book scalping standpoint. Uh, so the YM, it starts it starts to get very hard to trade it. The ES, it moves from here to here. Those, they're not even here, here anymore. They are like, I won't say like penny stocks, but like you see the volatility you can have in those American penny stocks. Well, it's, it, it's not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying that to kind of to make a joke, but it, it's similar. Like uh, the, 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 the type of volatility and open spreads you have ma makes it quite hard to trade it. You can still trade it, but it needs to be part of a multi-asset strategy like a spread or kind of an, uh, an arbitrage between uh, two assets with a high correlation factor and, and those kind of things. Okay, so that's one of the main uh, changes I've seen. So, uh, and I would even say that the ES, uh, now it's getting better since the beginning of the week because we, we have seen a pretty drastic uh, decrease uh, in the VIX, not drastic, but a good, uh, a, a, a couple of good down days on the VIX. Uh, but uh, I would say that the ES was even here um, like two weeks ago, like 10 days, seven days ago. And now this week, I will put it somewhere here. Okay. Uh, and this is why I'm starting to trade it <laughs> because I haven't traded the ES like uh, I've never loved it too slow. So now I'm going to tell you what I, because after, of course, I know you, what you guys want to, uh, wants to see is the trading videos. But what I will do now is explain you what I'm doing and what I'm following. Because of course, you, you are only going to see uh, the, the capture of one screen, but uh, I'm following other things at the same time. So first of all, uh, again, thanks to Bookmap for, for having me. Uh, to to uh, summarize my history with Bookmap, I started to use it in uh, 2015, which is pretty much when uh, I believe when it was created. I'm not sure exactly which year it was created. Uh, and then since then, I've been, um, I would say, a good friend of Bookmap. I love the tool. Uh, and it's very... Um, a very visual way to understand uh, some of the manipulation, some of the the, um, the 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 situation where you can see visually the importance of of liquidity uh, in various markets. So I use it for research, uh, I use it for visualization, and I use it as a confirmation tool when the market is fast. And you guys are lucky; it was the case those last days. Uh, so you can identify spoofing and react you can do it with an order book but sometimes it's very fast and so sometimes you really have some others that are flashing in the book and then disappearing but remember and th this is something i won't ever emphasize a lot uh, enough is the fact that the context is always very key okay you guys need to keep in mind that uh, there are a lot of strategies you can do uh, when, when it comes to microstructure most of them are highly profitable i mean like the, the 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 profit factor is very very good but where it's very hard it's that any strategy is to be used in a specific context okay if it's a market making con context uh, when you see your book map with a lot of colors on the top and below and those th those big tick lines are not even moving you see this kind of when it's like about like this you have the orders on the top you have the price here that is playing and you have the orders below. This is a typical market making market maker market. OK, so if you start to do directional strategies in this type of market, well, you're going to lose a lot of money. There's a lot of money to be lost in those type of things. If the market is like this and your strategy is working well, so it's a market maker market, but there is a shift because there is a news because the volatility increases, then it's the same. As soon as the context, the general market context, context it's, it's, change, it's changing. It's going to get very uh, hard to make money if you're using the wrong strategy. This is why context is key. 
And most of those, the strategies we use in the book are pretty simple, but the difficult part is to know what type of strategy to use. And so it's a, um, an assessment of the volatility of, of the market conditions. Uh, is there any, what's the focus of the market? What's the team of the day? Uh, when I say the team, sometimes like, now, of course, we really focused on on uh, on, on on the the global uh, sanitary crisis, like the the COVID nineteen crisis. That's the main focus, okay. But on top of that, like today, uh, we had the jobless claims, which were, of course, in in this context, bad. That, that's not a surprise, but it was way lower than what was expected. Well, that was the focus of the market. Okay, so you always need to understand that each market context has an appropriate set of strategies. Okay, so that's very important to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very good way also to have a view at a glance of the complete book because when you watch the DOM, usually you watch uh, uh, the the inside level uh, uh, zero to ten uh, from each side of the market. Uh, it's very interesting for me when I give uh, trainings on other book uh, dynamics. It, it's interesting to show it in a visual way. Uh, and it's very interesting also to show and explain the different order book strategies. So that's that's very nice, uh, very nice too. So what do I follow? I follow the various order book DOMs. I follow book map. I follow the tape from times to times. When I refer to the tape, of course, you guys, I'm sure, are pretty aware of it. Um, I'm talking about the times and sales, okay? The times and sales, depending on the markets with a filter, but Bookmap is doing it at a glance, but um, I, sometimes I still take a times and sales and I have a news feed also. So how do I trade specifically? I, tr I trade high to medium frequency. Uh, I take trade on, on, trades on order book, temporary imbalances, market correlations. Uh, I have specific high probability strategies uh, but again, the difficult part is to ident identify what strategy to use at what uh, and in what time. Like, for example, it was absolutely not possible for me to trade la like I'm going to show you uh, at the end of the presentation. Like, for example, um, two years ago on the S&P, absolutely not. Even one year ago, okay? It's, it's really important to pick the right strategy on the right market with the right liquidity. Um, and, and, and this is the only way it, it can work. Okay, if you're wrong on, on the, and, and to, to have a good understanding of the current volatility. Okay, and this is something you can do watching Bookmap, or this is something you can do watching the order books. Uh, following the market correlations is also one of the most important things to do. If you have the, uh, let's say the, the DAX doing a new high, and it's not confirmed by any one of the, of the, of the other uh, correlated markets, the other uh, indexes, well, you know that it's probably a, a new high that you can sell. But if you have the E-mini S&P, the stocks, uh, the Dow doing a new high together with the DAX, that's something completely different. Okay, so it's very important to keep uh, a look, I mean, in, in my style of trading, at all the markets at the same time. Okay, and when I say all the markets at the same time, it doesn't mean that you're watching uh, uh, all of them to trade them. So you're not looking for setups, but you have a little idea where they are in their range. Are they making new highs? Are we in range extension mode? Or are we uh, inside uh, the, um, the, the, the range of the day because it's a market making markets and, and those kind of, uh, of things. So from there, um, it can be, yeah, of course, it can be um, spreads or outrights. I mainly trade uh, outrights for now, so which means a, a single directional strategy on one instrument. Um, and I trade multiples, and I'm going to talk about it uh, in, uh, in a couple of slides. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it's very important when you work uh, scalping strategies to be able to trade more than one contract. Uh, if you don't have the capitalization required to trade more than one contract, then maybe you can just move to a, a, a micro or a, a smaller instrument, okay? But the problem is that if you trade only one single contract, you're going to be right or wrong. If you trade two contracts, you have more margin of, of, uh, of working to, you, you don't need to find an exact turning point. You need to find an area. And the more contracts you can trade, the more uh, easy, not easy because it's never easy, but the, the, the more um, you can be a little wrong, not completely wrong, but a little wrong, okay? So it's, it's, it's important to 
have an appropriated amount of contract that is um, linked to the size of your account. And with that, you will be able to play with the quantity of, of contracts you're going to trade. Okay, of course, if you play, for example, uh, uh, let's say uh, one uh, reversal setup, you won't be able to catch the exact low or the exact high. So the fact to scale in a little before the reversal and or a little after the reversal, um, uh, after he penetrated your level, I mean, uh, uh, well, that allows you to have an average, uh, an average uh, feel that will be more interesting than just to 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 pick one reversal point. Okay. Um, and anyways, if there are questions, I will be very happy to answer them uh, after. Uh, so um, from there, yeah, th this is what I was talking earlier. Uh, what I was discussing earlier. So during the COVID-19, uh, I moved from the, the DAX. I was not really trading the DAX as much, but it was my main contracts for about 10 years. But I moved to the small DAX. The, the, the small DAX tend to be the new DAX. And I was discussing with a couple of traders uh, and with a gentleman from TT uh, the fact that uh, we might ha see, see the, the, the big DAX disappear uh, due to the fact that the underlying value starts to get too big. And it's, this is also something that was discussed a couple of years ago. I had tweeted something about that. Uh, uh, in the beginning, there was like um, a poll among uh, high volume traders to, to uh, from Eurex to discuss, are we going to keep uh, having the DAX or are we going to move to the mini DAX or are we going to keep both or are we just going to keep the DAX like this? And uh, after that poll, they decided to create the, the mini DAX. And now I think with what's happening on the big DAX with this tick, 10 tick spreads, uh, it makes it very cost and efficient to hedge on it because it's mainly used for hedging purposes and hedging strategies. Um, so, yeah, this is pretty much what I was uh, what I was saying earlier. So I will move. Um, so from there, those are the questions that I ask myself all the time when I'm scalping. This is important, uh, very important. So there are two groups that are fighting in the markets, and this is a question that I'm asking to you guys. What are the two groups that we do have in the markets? Like we have, and more specifically in the market microstructure. So when you watch when you watch another book, when you watch Bookmap. You watch two groups that are fighting together. Okay. So uh, not sure if Bruce is around to um, yeah to let me know what the answers buyers and sellers uh, what uh, is no. what most people are saying. Yeah, no, because those groups are not really fighting. But buyers and sellers Market are always makers and liquidity providers. Uh, yeah. bears and bulls. With who? Uh, with who? Market makers and liquidity providers with who? A market maker is fighting with who, guys? When the market makers start to fight with someone, and there are fights occurring in those other books. So, uh, uh, informed traders, retail traders, long-term traders, um, okay. institutional the, the, traders, it doesn't really matter uh, the fact that they are institutional or not. It, it doesn't really matter. In my, it matters a lot, but in my example, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what, what I was trying to to remind you guys is that you have liquidity providers and market makers that are fighting with market takers. Okay, so the market takers are those those that are initiating the trades. The market makers and the liquidity providers are those that are providing the liquidity to uh, allow the other group to trade and due to that the market the reaction of the market maker and this is why and i started the presentation with that but this will uh, conclude the concept uh, and the and um, the, the key uh, concept of the relation between liquidity and volatility the fact is that as the market if the market maker is populating the dom with a quantity of limit orders and he sees that someone keeps eating his liquidity he will move the market either lower if someone is, is, is selling or higher if the market uh, if, if the market taker is buying. And why does he does that? 
yeah, you, you, you're going to say, yeah, you're a genius. You're telling me that when, when someone is selling, the market is going down, and when someone is buying, the market is going higher. I don't need you to know that. No, what I mean is that sometimes uh, it's a market-making market. So the market is quiet, and you don't have any moves on any other market. Remember my example when the DAX is breaking the highs alone, okay? But the thing is that the market maker will increase the market impact and when he will increase the market impact, he, he will do that so he can increase the average price of the position of the trader that is either buying or selling. And at some point when the price becomes too low or too high, the market maker will reverse the, ma the, the, the machine and start playing with the liquidity to put himself back in positive territory. Because remember that any, every time someone is selling, the market, the market maker is accumulating a long position. So as soon as the, the institution, if it is an institution that is selling uh, and that is taking liquidity is done, the market maker will do whatever is in his power to put the market back uh, where he is in profitable territory. He will lock the most volume he can and he will move. And this is something you can see in the micro structure, but this is somehow something you can see in the macro structure. But when it's happening in the macro structure, it's more sophisticated. You have hedging techniques and, and things like that. But mainly that's the core concept. So the, the two groups that are fighting are uh, on one side, you do have the liquidity providers and the market makers. And the other side, you do have anyone that is using liquidity. Okay, but remember, the, the people that are using the liquidity, they have a specific goal, which is a trading goal. It can be a hedge. It, it can be part of a, it can be, for example, a big fund that need to, uh, uh, to rebalance its fund and that do have a partial hedge on futures because it's part of the model of the fund. Uh, but, but it can also be like a, a, a small trader that is just initiating a trade. Oh, it can be, uh, let's say, uh, an intraday trader that sells because it's part of a multi-asset strategy. It doesn't matter. But so, so they, on one side of the trade, you will find most of the time someone with a need, a real trading need. And on the other side of the trade, you will find someone that is there to provide liquidity. Okay, just because he signed an agreement with the exchange and he's paid to provide liquidity and he received some special, it can be like in some markets you get some rebates, in other, it doesn't matter. But I really want you, if you take something out of this presentation, it's really that the two groups that are fighting at every time are the liquidity takers and the liquidity providers. And, and the, the liquidity providers, they try. This is why you always have those associations in the market. It's never, it, they try to uh, put the market back in profitable territory to unload their uh, exposure. And this is why you always have those moves in the, in, the, in the order book. Even if the market is going up, you pretty much have moves in the order book, up, down, up, down, a couple of ticks, you know, unless the liquidity is gone. But again, the good thing uh, and the interesting thing to do will be when you have a big price move to look what really traded inside the candle. Because you have, if you have a very big candle of like, a, a, let's say, I don't know, a, a 30 ticks, for example, okay? You have a big candle of 30 ticks, but when you look inside, you will see slippage, 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 nothing traded, okay? And then you have those unsigned traders coming and saying, oh, you needed to buy there and sell there. Yeah, but there was no liquidity to buy there and sell there, okay? So this is something you really, need to, to, to start watching because it makes a huge difference in the way you're going to see the markets after this presentation. So who is in control? Is the market maker in control or are the market takers in control? Okay, when you have a big news event, the market makers try, try to protect himself. As soon as you see the, the liquidity displayed in the order book disappearing, well, you see the market maker, he's, he's protecting himself. When the market maker is opening the spread 10 ticks, and when I say the market maker, it doesn't mean it's one specific uh, guy, but it's a group of banks acting together and provide, providing liquidity for a specific exchange, um, and, and, and they sign an agreement to do it, so they need to be there. But they will protect themselves, they will open the spread. The exchange, as soon as there is a special uh, event, they will uh, say, yeah, now it's a... Uh, it's a um, it's a high risk environment, so you have the the, the right to uh, uh, give less liquidity and open the spreads a little bit. But the market makers are there to keep an orderly market. That's very key. Um, so 
uh, yeah, so uh, the question I ask myself, who is in control, market makers or liquidity uh, uh, takers? Um, what is the impact of market takers? Okay, do they have the high, mar high market impact or not? Uh, and then I define the appropriate trading style and I decide the strategy I'm going to use. Okay, uh, and that's it. That's it, pretty much. Huh? Now you're done with uh, hearing a guy with a French accent talking a lot, <laughs> and I'm going to move to the examples. I'm pretty sure that's the thing you the most interested in. Uh, let me just... Uh, Bruce, can I pause showing the screen uh, during the, um, the time where I switch? Uh, so yeah, now I see these um, um, files here, the uh, video MP4 files. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm going to switch uh, and you're going you're gonna to tell me, okay, so this is from yesterday, the, let's put it in the list, okay, 1st of April, uh, yeah, ma mainly 1st of April because it was pretty busy, okay, so can you, okay, let me switch to the other screen. Um, Mm -hmm. Hold on a little. I'm maybe, to... maybe you can bring it over to the screen. Uh, it's a vertical screen. Yeah, something uh, I forgot to right. tell you guys. Uh, due to the high volatility, uh, when, when you trade the high volatile uh, instrument, uh, it's always ah, okay. I think it's this one. You seeing like a dome with yes. Uh, yes. Okay, with bookmark. Next okay. One. So this is um, this is. Uh, the close, uh, this is Thursday 31 uh, March, so it's two days ago, uh, at 3.16. Um, and this is a specific situation where uh, I'm expecting a, a short-term reversal, but I want the market to be a little faster. You see, it's just flirting with the, with the lows, and me, I want some kind of acceleration. So I was expecting this for a long time. I was bored, uh, or you should see the time here yeah so that, that's the um, european paris uh, berlin time so it was 9 uh, 25 uh, eastern time okay so here I, i'm starting to see uh, a little uh, a little rejection yeah of course the, the market is not due to the video capture it's a little um, you don't you don't see it as well but it takes hours because it's very there are a lot of things happening so it takes a long time to produce the videos uh, but you see here, I'm trying to scale in. You see, at the bookmap side of things, uh, we uh, went inside the orders and it pretty much dried out, which is exactly what I saw in the book as well. And we have uh, a lot of uh, tape-wise, when you see the green balls, uh, you have, uh, and those, uh, um, by the way, this is the alpha version. Uh, so you have uh, the, grill, the green balls are the positive delta, okay? And look, look how it's starting to push. And look here, you have those, and you can see it on Bookmap very clearly. You have those big orders that are pushing it. And uh, to me, look, you see, this is an algo working on the left. To me, this is not the market maker. Um, the market maker doing this. Market maker won't keep like a very. They, they keep. They try to keep kind of a similar number of orders to each price level. When you see a big concentration of orders at one specific price, that's not the typical market make uh, market making uh, uh, behavior. You know, so it's it's really like uh, here psychology behind this. Uh, market was uh, close to the low. It's the end of the session. It's a very very um, very uh, an. Uh, uh, uncertain uh, uh, market context, so I'm expecting covering and I'm expecting short squeezing. Okay, and it's confirmed by the order flow, so I'm I'm, I'm willing to. Uh, uh, and you can also um, uh, to take a long and and try to be long. And and I've been working the long side that day uh, for for the, the much pretty much of the day, the the most part of the day. Uh, and you can see why scaling is important because you see it's not I, I, I work like. I'm coping with the orders in the book. I'm confirming on bookmap. You can see the the yellow order uh, now on the um, uh, on the bookmap at the price uh, at 565 and a half. You can see the big order that is showing. 
uh, 66, sorry, five, uh, 506. And you see it's moving. When the market is moving down, it's moving, uh, it's moving down as well. But the one that is anchored uh, is the, the 66, 65 and a half there. Okay, so it still looks good. And it's very slow for close. It's a very controlled market. There are a couple of guys that, because, you know, those guys that are playing those games right there, here, they won't have the guts to do so if it's high volatility and if there is real flow. But not sure if you guys have watched, I'm sure you have watched book, book, book map a lot, but if you watch the DOM, the way it moves, you can see it's very slow. And it, and funny thing is that for the last 10 to 15 minutes, I stopped, I, I was already done. Uh, but since it was the end of the quarter, a lot of orders came to hit uh, the market. There is a very big uh, volume spike during the 10 to 15 minutes to all the people that still needed to uh, to put orders in started to uh, to trade. But before that, during the last 30 minutes, it was pretty, pretty quiet. And you can see always, uh, always quoting when it's a market like this, always trying to... Um, uh, to quote, to put limit orders, to expect to be filled and to put the exit. And you see here, I used uh, on the um, on the right here, you see the big order that is at uh, 570. Uh, I used it to uh, to put myself a little bit in front of it because I believe uh, I believe it will be hard for the market to cross that order. And I'm trying to add because I also believe that the market market tends to to you know there are a lot of bots that are there to find liquidity, and so due to that, they tend to when you have a big order to go and see if if the order is there because if the order is there it means that uh, the um, accumulation algorithms uh, they used to go and 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 probe to see if the the, the liquidity is real, you know. So Kevin, are you, are you putting in yeah. um, uh, stop losses or just just uh, take profits? No, I'm hedging. If I, if I'm really go getting in uh, in uh, only limit orders, uh, wh why do I use only limit orders? Because it allows me to uh, make sure that I'm not trading with any liquidity provider or any market maker that is doing the same as I do. Okay, so so uh, what you can do uh, because I, I understand that we feed on stops. Basically, it's what we do. We feed on stops. What I, what I will do, first thing I do when I come in front of my uh, of my desk is try to locate the stop. If I have a good price, if I found a good price in the in, in the book, okay? If I found a good price, it's hard for me to get filled. Very hard for me to get filled. If you put a limit order and, and a limit order and you filled immediately, you're probably not doing doing it right and it will probably be a losing trade. Because to find a counterpart. Uh, when you work a good price, it, it's hard. It's hard to find someone that is willing to, to take you at that price. So the best place to, to, to put uh, your limit order uh, is in the areas where there are stops. And this is why here, I, 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 in the end of the day, I'm willing to play the short squeeze because I know that there are all those weak, uh, those weak uh, shots that are having the, 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 the short position in place. And some of them, they have tight stops because they need confirmation. You know, we, 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 with the other book and book map together, you always ahead, like, if you're watching it close, like if you trade like I do, you're always ahead of things. You, you, might, you might not catch a reversal, of course, but, but uh, you might try to catch it three, four, five, six times, seven times, but at some point you will be able to do so. Okay, so it, it just costs like every time, it's like what, five, six, six, four ticks, five ticks, the best thing we try to do, and this is something that allows you to trade multiples, uh, will do. Uh, what we try to do usually is to, to, um, to, uh, to use the multiples so that, uh, so that you will be able uh, uh, to work a zone. Okay, so you work, you work a zone and, 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 and you try to exit and to re-enter and you stay in the market. If you feel comfortable, you're making money, you feel comfortable, you will take four, five ticks, six ticks. And once in a while, because you dare, and sometimes there's just a big trend starting, once in a while you get, uh, you get a runner. That can happen, okay? Or sometimes, because, because you need to, okay, me, I see like uh, the, the, the general analysis, like the, the major uh, uh, 
uh, support and resistance that everybody is following. And I use usually volume profile to identify it because I see volume profile as something that summarizes the support and resistance of every time frame trader, the traders that are trading any time frame. Uh, well, what you usually will do, you will take that price and you will know where it is. So it will give you a context, okay, a general context. Okay, now it, you see it's 90, uh, so it's 3.30, uh, exactly 3.30 uh, Eastern time. And so you will take the, um, the, the uh, sorry, uh, Bruce, I lost what I was saying. I'm, I'm watching the, <laughs> the video at the same time. Uh, uh, what was I go What was my point? <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you I have that all the, when I'm talking about market I'm so passionate it op uh, opens a window that opens another window uh, and I'm not sure what 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 I was explaining right now uh, I, I I can't recall I was actually formulating a few questions for you uh, so okay I... great okay great but okay just to to to, to squash this uh, the, the thing is you you you, you might uh, take a, a cash stop if you feel more comfortable. But the easiest place in the book to find a counterpart at a very inappropriate place is in a stop zone, okay? And what we try to do, we always try to, do, to trade the market when it's overextended. It's like an elastic. Not sure, we, we, me, when I'm watching the book here, it, it's very clear to me, okay? But I'm not sure if it's clear to, clear to you guys, but it's like, the, the market will go in one direction, then reverse in the other direction, and it will keep going like that, and 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 so on and so forth. Okay, I'm maybe going to close this vid. Uh, it's basically I'm I'm going fast forward, but you see, it's always the same kind of the same concept. You entering, you exiting, you work with the volatility, you adding to a position. The thing you will have a very high a, a very high ratio uh, of of win. When you do something like that but the the key thing is to use the right strategy this is kind of a directional market making type strategy you know uh, and so the the problem with those is that you really need to be able to identify the right market conditions uh, if you use it uh, and i will always try to scratch if i see something is wrong i will try to scratch or to to minimize the the loss but if the market is pushing in one specific direction uh, and that you're in the wrong direction uh, what you can do is trying to hedge on a on a correlated um or you just take the loss and you will if you have time uh, usually at the beginning of the of the of the training day you're very aggressive and then when you come closer to the end of the day you withdraw your ag your aggressivity a little bit because you know that you won't have enough time to remake it but as soon as you identify the the, the market conditions well you pretty uh, you, you you will do pretty good if you use the strategy as well. But the problem is that once in a while you will get a stop loss, uh, and that's a big stop loss. A big stop loss will take like uh, one, two, uh, sometimes three days of profit, depending on how big. But it, it doesn't happen often because normally you should be able to to see what's going on and to and to manage. Okay. Yeah, that was exactly yes. the, the question I was going to ask um, because ah, okay. uh, you are you are putting on um, risk uh, throughout. Uh, and then, what if it goes against you? Um, so, uh, it, but it, but you're you're constantly um, also reducing that risk by taking your um, five to six tick uh, profit and then looking for a pullback and yeah. getting back in. Yeah, it's like it's like sometimes sometimes look here it's like a pure scalping thing. I've seen a bot that is at eight fifty and another one that is at eight one fifty, and I think I've played that like six seven times in a row just just with one single contract because you see most of the time i have maximum four or five contracts in in those type of, uh, of of markets you know and um it's something you do when you have a really tight market and the more you keep doing it the more you keep doing it the more you add to the profits and at some time it will move it will move uh, uh, against you and then you will lose a little part of the profit but but the key is that it needs to be uh, look here i just took a loss of uh, of like three ticks you know, because I felt like um, like uh, it was not doing what I was expecting it to do. Uh, but yeah, that's it pretty much. Uh, any other questions B before I move? Not sure uh, how long, you know, when he talk talks about trading, I can stay for. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, actually, for? Um, let's see. I mean, we have so, lots of questions coming in. Um, uh, yeah. Why don't you move on to another video? Uh, we've almost okay, been sure. in an hour. Um, so. Um, okay, okay. Maybe I should. I will move. Uh, I have a lot of videos yesterday, so I'm not sure what you uh, what you guys prefer. I have some in the beginning of the day, some in the end of the day. 
Uh, I have videos. Yes, I think actually, I know it's not very interesting to see because you guys want to see the action. And but me, uh, to me, uh, as a trader, uh, the videos that I'm the more interested in when someone, uh, a fellow, is, is showing me his trades, is the videos when there are no trades. You know, what, what, the most interesting is, is is when someone that is able to trade very high frequency decide to do nothing because he feels like it's not appropriate to trade. You know, and I, I have videos like that, but I know it's maybe not the 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 thing you guys are interested in. But I have also, uh, I don't know, I have early uh, early afternoon. Uh, so early afternoon, Europe is like uh, the morning session uh, in the e mini. I have the close in the e mini. Uh, look, this is early afternoon here. Uh, let me move the video to that screen. Oh, Kevin. Um... Yes. I, I, do you, uh, tomorrow at the same time, do you uh, uh, have time to present? Uh, maybe we'll do a part two to this. Oh, oh guys, <laughs> tomorrow would be a little difficult. I'm exhausted. Ah, I've okay. been trading like for, 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 <laughs> for, for weeks and, uh, you know, uh, I was very happy to do this, but I didn't anticipate the fact that we will have the markets that we had. And uh, and so maybe maybe a couple of a couple of days I need to rest a bit I I, I sleep like four or five hours uh, per night. <laughs> so I, <laughs> okay. I need a little rest. Well, um, yeah, yeah, maybe we... Monday Monday maybe not sure if it's it's a specific day it needs to be on. A... No, uh, we we can we can do it Monday um, or yeah. or Tuesday maybe. Um, uh, it's it's up to you. What it, tell me what's best and I'll I'll change it right now. No, we can do it Monday. Uh, uh, and but yeah, of course, I, I won't be able to do again new videos because those videos are from, are from yesterday. The, I have like probably six, seven videos from the day of yesterday. So it's ah, okay. fresh. So you can see exactly. Uh, how, because I think, you know, a lot of people, they come up with videos that are one year, one year and a half ago. It's not really relevant, you know, and I don't want to pick anything specific that I want to show you. So you see everything. You see some traders are losses, some trades are are good trades and sometimes the volatility is high sometimes it's slower and and it's what i wanted to share with you guys but i want if we do another one monday i won't have time to trade tomorrow and and make new videos because it takes a lot of time oh, just to produce the video it's like every time like one hour one hour and a half for the projection of the video so. oh that that's okay we can just go over i saw you have several there so uh um yeah, we can, we can just do. go through the ones you've already already created Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that will that 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 that, could, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. All and right. So if, if, if you guys have more questions, then we can uh, we can do it. Um, yep. And and do you want uh, Bruce? Do you want us to address uh, a special Q, Q and A right now, or? Uh, um. Let's uh, uh, let let's do this. Um. Guys. Um. I you, I have lots of questions coming in. Uh. And um. If if um. We'll, we'll try to get to them. Uh, maybe a few of them here, but. Uh, uh, let's let's do this. Um, maybe Kevin continue on with another video, uh, and sure. uh, and we can um, uh, you know address some of these other other questions uh, on on Monday. Okay, sure, no problem. Let's do that. Okay, let's finish with this one. It's nine minute twenty three. Of course, I don't remember much of the trades because like it's a lot in 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 a day. But here it's like quite open, no direction, uh, low volatility. Yes, he's stronger than the YM. So I, I took a little note. So I'm not sure if you can see them uh, here. Uh, and is the video. Can you see the screen? Uh, let's see. I see the. I, uh, no, I think, my, I think my screen is frozen. Yeah, I think I have a little issue. Hold on. Let me do a control. I'll, I'll delete. I think this, this screen here uh, with the video player is frozen. Let me exit it. Okay. Um, oh, it's not the same. Oh, sorry, it's it's always opening opening on a different uh, screen. Okay, now it looks like it's fine. Um, you see, I'm, 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 when I'm trading, usually I'm listening to personal development things, <laughs> so you can see. So <laughs> it has nothing to do with, <laughs> with the, the topic. But uh, yeah, but it freezes again. Uh, as soon as I uh, as I share the screen, uh, I, I put it on the screen. The, the video is freezing. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me restart again. Or maybe I will uh, I will change the screen and go back to that screen. Uh, oh. And go back to six. 
There we go. There we go. Uh, let's ah, it's moving now, right? You can see it moving now. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um A VWAP kind of, um, oh yeah, it's a VWAP kiss, but I'm not interested in it. Okay. Um, uh, do you, you want to go over another example or? Uh... Uh, no, no, it, it's, it's going to, it's going to go, uh, the, you know, I'm, I, I took the videos like pretty uh, raw. Uh -huh. So um, uh, look here. Yeah. Look here. It's interesting because you have like, those um, uh, high liquidity areas, we're trying to kiss them. You see, we we start to see weakness uh, on that level, and you can clearly see in bookmap how, how the level is holding, and you can see the the slight market maker uh, uh, layers uh, on the top and the kind of role we have. So I started to um, to put some order based mainly on that on that info, and I started to get aggressive because I see that it's picking a little bit of steam. Um, you see it's pushing a little bit against me, but you still have the quantity and you have a little bit of flow. If you look to the dots, it's pushing a little bit to the upside, but I'm expecting the the order there to, to, to hold pretty much. And you see you have two other layers behind. So what I'm thinking is pretty much I might add to it uh, if, if needed. You see now we're pushing and now that we, you know, sometimes those orders when they reel, uh, you always believe that if they real and you see that look more, you see a, a big, you saw the big order 590 flashing, someone that is trying to pushing to pushing it back back down. Not sure if you guys saw that. Yep, yep. Uh, so I probably have bailed this thing if if this trade if if, if this was not flashing. Uh, okay, but 590. It seems that, and I don't believe that the guy is is long. Uh, uh, is um, Sorry, I don't believe that the guy uh, is trying to short. I you see, I'm putting my mouse over it. Huh? The, the 500 quantity, like at, at 499. You can see it in bookmap very clearly how it appears, like the, the, the yellow thing at 499. It's very clear to see. Uh, and I don't believe that that guy is actually willing to sell anything. I believe he's pushing people in, like the, the classical spoof that you can see all over the net. I believe he pushes people in into uh, his buy orders. So I, I'm a little stressed out, uh, not uh, quite stuck in that trade. You see, I'm not adding to it because I don't really know uh, where, where this is going. Uh, I might think of, I, I don't really remember the trade. Huh? I'm, I'm analyzing what I'm when doing, but I, I remember uh, a little bit of the, the guy that flashes uh, 580. Uh, so that was yesterday, right? Um, and still waiting for it to push. And what I believe, see, there is another anchor at 495 under. I believe that the market will go and check this out. You see, I'm showing it with my mouse. Uh, the anchor at 495, there we are. Okay, because the market will try to go and see because some bots, they need liquidity. Because if they don't find, if they don't find a counterpart, they will have a too high market impact. Okay, so here I'm looking if, we can, if I can get anything out of this, but it looks like it's not going anywhere. And you see, it's very different. If you compare to the other video, I'm not adding to it. I'm not doing anything. I'm just trying to get out because I'm stuck. I've no something I always keep in mind. I know I have a, a risk like of about 10. So I know I have paid the risk of 10 to be in this trade. So I wanted to, to, to get something out of it because if not, I will have a, a negative risk, risk reward. And now I'm thinking of exiting at the, at the entry. You see, I'm trying to scratch it and I scratched it. Uh, but it looked that I, yeah, I had two contracts actually. I thought I had one, but I had two. You see, now I'm still I'm still expecting it to. Uh, now I'm trying to by doing this by adding another contract, scratching at the entry and adding another contract on the other side. What I'm trying to do is to have a better uh, average price, so to to have a higher short average price, so that if we go and push again in 900, um, uh, 400, sorry, uh, uh, 94. Uh, well, I, I will be able to get at least something out of it. You see one contract, ah, and this is what I was expecting. This is what I was waiting for. You see how it, the acceleration. When you have the acceleration, exhaustion, it's done. You know, the party is done. No need to, to, to unless it's a key 
a long-term uh, type of um, of price where you expect a reversal. But uh, usually, me, I'm, and sometimes I miss moves. Huh? You see, it, it went a couple of ticks further. But I, I stick to what I do, uh, to what I know. I mean, <laughs> in what I do. Yes, I'm not sure if it, yeah, he's still a couple of minutes remaining. Uh, exactly what I was looking for, pretty incredible to see that in 2012, uh, in 2020, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, so yeah, 2020 um, in the S&P, seeing a manipulation like this, like if it's like a small uh, liquidity contract is pretty incredible. Uh, it's what I meant. Because it was really, you really saw like the, someone manipulating the, the market on the top, probably having an order down, pushing the, person, the people in his, his order below, and then the market is going in the other direction and, and, and he's playing and, and having a big weight on, on, on the market. And you can see it's one player because the order disappears from one side and appears to the other side. Okay, look now, pushing at uh, 491.75. It's really good to, be, me, of course, I don't have the time to, to, I watch bookmap for confirmation, but I don't keep my eyes on bookmap. So now I have my eyes on bookmap and it's really interesting to, uh, to see how visual it is actually. Because you see the price level, now they start to disappear. It became uh, blue, kind of blue again. And again, it's, uh, and now it's done. Look, market, market, market condition changed. Uh, you, when I say, yeah, the, the market condition can change, you see different market conditions. Okay. I'm looking here for a short, but now it's more based on, on something that I saw specifically in the other book. And you see, I'm, I'm, I tried first, I tried three, and then I changed my mind. Uh, I, I put another one higher, and I remove it. I change my mind a lot when, I, when I'm trading. It's always trying, and you're tweaking. You're tweaking your trading style. You're watching bookmap. You see, I put it the order there. Uh, I, actually, it's bookmap that make me change my mind, because I put it the order low, and then I saw that there was the 499 level, and I thought that was a good, a good level to add. But I'm already out now, because the market never had the chance to, to go there. Okay, great, great example there. Uh, yeah. Lots of changes back and forth there, uh, and um, uh, yeah, the market conditions. The, this is the, the the good thing about Bookmap. You take a look and you have an idea on the market conditions. Of it, uh, uh, in fact, you take a look for two three minutes, and after those two three minutes, uh, you confirm, you see, and you start to get the feel. And from there, it opens your toolbox, and you think about what type of strategy am I going to use in that specific market context. Should it be aggressive? Should it be defensive? Should it, should it be directional? Should it be market making? Should it be, and yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful tool. Uh, excellent, excellent. Um, uh, Kevin, um, I, let's see, we've been going over an hour here um, and okay. uh, we've okay. only gone through a Just few examples, um, but yes. um, uh, let, me, let me explain a few things, uh, guys. So sure. I, I have made a, no, a new webinar. I have put it into the chat. Uh, we will, we will, um, uh, do it again here on Monday, part two, uh, at the same time, 11 Eastern. Uh, so uh, register there in the chat, and uh, I will have to send out, I guess, a new a new email, etc., to you guys as well. Uh, so uh, take a look again in the chat. I just reposted re uh, it in there. Uh, all of Kevin's contact information, a link to special offers in Bookmap, and then the the bottom one is the uh, web new webinar link. So you can register now for um, Monday's webinar with Kevin. Uh, but uh, I mean, this is just really, really great stuff. So um, uh, the it's insight. Fresh, fr fresh, from, fresh from the box. Well, and it's uh, so I'll great put... to see like you working your strategies and talking about the different strategies like on the fly uh, and um, uh, see your actions within it. Um, and, and you're very precisely describing uh, your actions. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, the thing is that even for me, it's interesting to see, uh, because I, of course, I don't recall half of it when you take 300, 350, 500 trades in a day. You don't, you don't remember all of that. Some of them you do, but, uh, <laughs> but not all of them, you know. So it's interesting. And it's also interesting because I can watch the book map chart at the same time uh, without watching the book, because me, what I watch the most is the book, and then I look confirmation, I watch bookmark for the context, I watch the book, and so, so back and forth, you know? So, so yeah, it's very nice. I, I have, uh, Bruce, I have um, a thing, uh, I'm planning to send like videos on a maybe uh, weekly, weekly basis, uh, so I practice my English, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
uh, not sure uh, where I should put it or if uh, if there is anywhere where uh, uh, where I can put the the opt-in box. Um, it, uh, there's a chat box there if you want to put this into the chat. Ah, okay, I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will paste it. Absolutely. Um, Kevin, just just one question. There's been a few questions regarding um, the correlations. Uh, I think you answered mm -hmm. it. You said that uh, uh, if you're looking at the ES, then for example, you're looking at the other stock indexes as well, um, and the DAX as well. Um, or, or what I you... watch, like the correlation, I'm I'm watching. Yes. What which correlations are you are you looking at? And um... okay. So so usually I I, uh, I I put risk assets and quality assets in two separate in two separate sorry. Uh, um, uh, places in my screen. Usually, I put the risk assets on the left and the quality assets on the right. Uh, I mean, in uh, with the order books. Uh, what I'm going to watch is depending on the context, uh, as always. What I'm always watching is the the um, the bond gold crude indexes. Now, regarding the indexes, it depends of the context. Like, for example, now, uh, another example of the context, I started to watch so the future on Italian uh, bonds because I had a training with a trader that I think should be there uh, today. Uh, and uh, he told me about it and I started to watch it and it's an interesting indicator. Uh, from there, I started to watch the French debt as well, the fut Eurex futures on the French debt. Uh, so it really depends to the context. I always give the same example in 2008, there were a lot of people doing the carry trades, not people, but funds, large funds doing the carry trades on the dollar and the yen. And so the yen had become the best leading indicator you can get. Why? Because a lot of people had to pay margin calls and due to that, they were liquidating all the other position they had to pay the margin, the margin calls they were having in the, in the yen. And because of that, uh, it was the key indicator to watch intraday. Uh, now what I'm watching a lot is the dollar index. Uh, I'm a, a big, uh, uh, I don't trade it, uh, but I watch the dollar index, dollar index that trades on the ICE US. I've always been a big fan of it because there is an inverse correlation, inverted correlation between the dollar index and the, and the indexes. And it's very useful because when you watch all of them, you can identify if it's a fake move on one single isolated market or if it's a global change in the market conditions. So that's very important to me. Okay, excellent. Um, so, uh, I, I, guys, I, I think we got to end it here. It's about hour and fifteen minutes. Um, I've I've sent you the link there. Uh, a bunch of you have already signed up for it, which is great. Um, and um, uh, we'll uh, we'll reconvene again and do part two. Uh, Kevin, really great Wonderful. stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for tomorrow, but I'm really exhausted. <laughs> oh no, no, no problem at all. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, any parting words of wisdom before uh, uh, next uh, webinar? Oh, context is key, guys. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll be very glad to see you guys back. Uh, That's when uh, Monday, I believe. Monday, um, Monday uh, morning, Eastern time. Yes, exactly. 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. And we'll see you on Monday. You're welcome. See you on Monday, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Good trading. Bye-bye.